thank you very much and welcome everyone. I hope you're enjoying the show today. Um, I just wanted to give a brief overview of what Nebraska Extension does, uh, who we are, and how we might serve you. And then I'll um, go into just some of the common questions and themes we're seeing uh, with the ongoing drought and lack of forage resources this year. So Nebraska Extension looks a little different today um, than the previously known Cooperative Extension Services where you have a county, single county agent in the county. Um, we have went to more of a specialized model uh, where if you call in with a question or stop by our office, we're going to connect you with a local educator who specializes in that area. And we have eight major program areas. Um, and you probably interacted with a lot of these probably more so than you realize if you have a kid or grandkid in 4-H, that is one of our major program areas that we offer. Um, but maybe you're a certified pesticide applicator or you're certified to be quality assurance. Those are programs that we offer as well. But whatever a question you may have, maybe you need help identifying uh, a weed in your pasture or uh, determining what disease might be going on with a tree in your yard, and we are certainly here to help you answer those questions. So um, I'm part of our livestock systems team, and so I'm the beef educator located in Beaver City in Furnace County, and I cover here in the southwest part of the state. So with the lack of forage resources we're seeing this year, um, one way to really save on your hay would maybe do is be evaluating your uh, feeding system and looking at your hay waste. And our uh, research has shown that feeding uh, processed hay on the ground, uh, rolling hay out for the day, feeding in our, our open ring feeders or a trailer is going to result in about 18 to 20 percent loss. Now if we roll out more than a day's worth of hay, that number is going to be even higher. Uh, but our sheeted bottom ring fe feeders there in the picture on the left is going to have a little bit less in terms of waste um, and then even more so with our tapered cone feeder or basket. And the process hay that we can feed in a bunk is going to have the least amount of waste, about 2 to 5 percent, um, but a lot of that is actually attributed to uh, just what's lost in the hay processing um, due to dust. If you're looking for some forage resources, uh, a couple resources that may be helpful would be the Nebraska Hay and Forage Hotline. Uh, this is offered through the Nebraska Department of Ag and has an ongoing list of forage available for sale. We also have the Nebraska Extension Crop Residue Exchange. Uh, this is an online platform that connects crop producers who have residue available for grazing with cattle producers who are looking for residue to graze. And so typically a listing is going to include a map, um, the dates that that field's available, whether or not uh, water and fences provided, and then the dates uh, available for grazing. We do tend to see more cattle producers searching on here than there is uh, crop residue available. So I definitely encourage you if you're a crop producer to consider listing your crop residue available to be grazed. This can certainly be another uh, source of income. And we, our research has shown that there's very uh, little impact in terms of compaction and no negative impact on crop yields for the following year. We've seen a lot more crop residues being baled this year, uh, which can certainly be another way to extend those forage resources. Um, but just a couple considerations when you're feeding those. Um, if you're going to feed uh, corn residue bale in a round bale feeder, that is going to be different than if that cow's out grazing corn residue. So she's only going to be able to eat about 1.2% of her body weight. And so the concern with this is that's only going to meet about half of her energy requirements and about a third of her protein requirements um, during mid-gestation. And so a couple options there would be to, that you could feed some higher concentrate feeds like distiller's grains. You could feed about four pounds of dry distiller's grains for a mid-gestation cow and a little over five pounds for a, a cow that's in late gestation. Another option would be to feed that with some higher quality hay. So you could feed it along with some alfalfa. About nine and a half pounds of alfalfa would do it for a, a mid-gestation cow and up to 13 pounds for a cow that's in late gestation. 
We've also seen a lot of soybean residue being uh, baled this year, which again is another great way to help extend our forage resources. Um, you just need to be cautious that feeding that alone is going to result in loss of condition for that cow. It will not support the nutrient requirements of, a, of even a dry cow. Um, even though for our soy soybean needs, it, they're about 12% crude protein, uh, but the concern with that is it's only about a third digestible. And so it's really a low in both protein and energy. So again, some options there would just be to feed that with another higher concentrate feed, um, or you could use it to stretch some of your higher quality hays. I would encourage you whether you have purchased hay or you're feeding your own to get it tested so you know what the quality of that hay is. Really in dry years like this, we actually sometimes see that that hay is higher quality than what we would expect. And so the case may be, you might not need to be feeding that free choice. And so just being aware of what, what the nutrient quality of that feed is. Um, with our failed forages, we recommend using a hay probe. But if you do not have a hay probe, you can certainly uh, borrow one from the local extension offices, uh, or you can consider purchasing one. The National Forage Testing Association has a list of companies that have probes available for sale, um, and they usually run around a couple hundred dollars. And so it's definitely something that could uh, be worth the investment in terms of reduced feed costs and improved cattle performance. But once you've um, got your hay probe, we'd encourage you to pour about 15 to 20 bales for a given lot. And when I say a lot, what this really means is just hay that is similar in type. So it's gonna have a similar cutting date, similar maturity, um, and similar plant variety. So if your hay, if there's any differences in these characteristics, I'd um, encourage you then to have a separate sample for both of those hay lots. For cattle feeds, we typically like to test them for moisture, protein, and energy, or total digestible nutrients, or TDN. And then in dry years like this, it's important to test for nitrates as well, um, because we want to make sure there's no nitrate toxicity. And um, if so, then we can look at how we might feed that with some other low nitrate feeds to dilute it out. And so once you got your analysis back from the lab, if you need any help interpreting those results, um, we are certainly available to help you with that. Um, or if you need some help putting together cattle rations um, or developing a feeding program, we would be happy to help. Uh, my background is in beef cattle nutrition, and frankly, that is one of the things I enjoy most about my job, so please don't hesitate to reach out if that's something you need assistance with. Some of the information we would ask of you to provide, if that's something you need help with, would be just what feed sets you have available or access to, um, if you have a nutrient analysis for those feeds. Again, that is encouraged, but if not, we can use our NRC book values for that. It just makes it a little bit more difficult to uh, really achieve the performance that you're wanting. Those book values might ne necessarily be representative of the feeds that you have. And then the class in uh, size of cattle. So if you have cows, we can certainly put together a mid-gestation, late-gestation, and lactation diet. And then if you have calves, just knowing what your marketing target is and what that average daily gain is that you're trying to achieve. We do have some beef quality assurance trainings coming up, and so if you're in need of a certification or recertification for beef quality assurance, we are actually holding a training here on the fairgrounds over in the 4-H building on December 14th at 10 a.m. Uh, but we do ask that you pre-register for that, um, either online at bqa.unl.edu um, or by contacting the number here on the screen, which is our Panhandle Research and Extension Center where our BQA coordinator is located. Uh, but this training will also be uh, available for those needing BQA transportation certification. So if you're in need of that, please get pre-registered. Just a couple more resources I'll leave you with. If you're looking for more beef cattle production information, I'd encourage you to visit our website at beef.unl.edu. Um, we also have our UNL Beef Watch newsletter which comes out the first of the month, and it has different articles on timely topics and upcoming events. And then we have our UNLB Watch podcast, if you're a podcast listener. Uh, this is really the audio companion to our newsletter. Um, our 
my colleague Aaron Berger, he coordinates that and, and interviews the art or the authors of the articles each month and just takes a deeper dive into those topics. So if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to come and visit. I'll be around the show for a bit yet today. And tomorrow, my colleague uh, Todd Whitney will be here to talk on cropping systems. So thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Aaron. And thank you to the university for sharing you with us. That's awesome. And you, your booth is right here in the in this building. The booth is right over here. If you want to talk to Erin, she's got literature there on the farm stuff, and there'll be some other literature here on the beef stuff tomorrow. All right. Well, that does it for our presentation right now. Thank you very much, Erin.